Keep the car running. The Godfather game is based off of the first Godfather film and the book. So we draw from both of those sources. And then we, we weave additional story. So we've got the film, we've got the book. We needed to respect those pieces, but we couldn't fear them. We had to take this fiction where we needed to take it so that we could produce the best possible piece we could in the video game or interactive arena. And that's what we think we've done with The Godfather. Don Corleone sends his warmest regards. In the interactive game, what's really cool is you get to create your own character and put yourself in the world of the Corleones, in the world of 1945 New York, in the world of crime, and figure out how you can use the game mechanics, the rules of the game, to go from being an outsider to being a soldier to being a Don. People are going to find many things that are recognizable, both in the living world, the open world game, as well as in the specific missions. For the fan of the fiction, they're going to see all the famous movie scenes that they always expected to see. They're going to interact with the Godfather characters. They're going to have the opportunity to see themselves right there with the Marlon Brando Vito character, right there with Sonny, right there with Tom. And they're going to see themselves immersed in the Godfather film. We need some help here. God damn it. From day one, the vision was really to recreate a Godfather world. I'm going to make him an offer again with you. So we've worked with Brando. We've worked with... Duval, we worked with Khan, we worked with uh, Abe Vigoda, and those talents, those actors, are so associated with their parts. Um, it was really important to us for us to be able to leverage their skills, to hear their voice. What's this guy watching a movie? Get him out of here! It really lends a, a very strong sense of authenticity to your experience. If you're going to be one of our associates, is the power of negotiation. Even with the way things are now, especially in times like this, use your head. Behind every one of these video games is a fantastic team. We've pulled together people from the film industry, from the game industry, from the literary industry, from a variety of different places looking for people who wanted to make magic. It's been a very complicated process from a technology point of view, from a new game design point of view. Each area we were in, we were taking on a lot of risks. But we knew we wanted to hit it out of the park. One of the things that we're really doing is saying, that's a fascinating world. You've been fascinated by it when you read the book. You were fascinated by the film. What would it be like if you put yourself there? Someday, and that day may never come, I may call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, accept this as a gift. Momface is, in short, a creative player. So basically what we've given the player an opportunity to do is create your own monster. But we'll see about that. What you'll be able to do is go in there and start off right off the bat and say, okay, what kind of face is this guy gonna have? From there, you can get the basics. You can adjust his eyes, you can give him beady eyes, you can give him big staring eyes. You move on down to his mouth, his nose, his, his ears, and then there's really a lot of details that you can add from there. Maybe if I broke your legs, you'd understand. Well, then you get to move on to his body. So you decide his body type, and from there we move on to a huge amount of apparel, from leisure suits to very basic t-shirts and slacks. It's really an ability to give your character detail that'll make him different from any other character that there could be. In most games, you're playing someone else's character. This is, you're, you're immediately becoming a part of the Godfather world. Hey, Mom. How you doing? Looking sharp there, Pally. Very rarely does a film get to define a genre as the Godfather did. And we wanted to do the same thing in our area, in, in the game. And we knew one of the areas we could start with was in the control scheme itself. 
So we coined what we call the black hand control mechanic, which is a very innovative way of manipulating the controller. So we start in what we call a white box. And we have very, very limited animations, but it's all about getting that controller to feel right in the player's hands. So if you want to charge a punch, you pull back on the analog stick and your character will charge up a punch to intimidate or throw a more powerful attack. To throw quick attacks, simply flick the stick forward and you can strain together your own combos. You can then take the shoulder buttons on the, on the controller itself and grab those. So as you grab the controllers, you're manhandling the controller itself while your player is manhandling the opponent on screen. So you start to see this extension of your hands. And then what would the godfather be without a strangling mechanic? So to strangle, you click the analog sticks down while you've got this controller head. It's a very visceral feeling. And at that point, the controller vibration kicks in, simulating your opponent's heartbeat. So as the controller goes lifeless in your hands, as does the opponent in your character's hands. One of the things I really like about the system is the amount of control it gives the player over the, the various moves that you can pull off. Um, it uses the, the controller in ways that many games have not used before. But also from a technological point of view, it's, it was a relatively complex system for us to build. The black hand control allows for the most intense experience because every attack is at your fingertips and it really feels like an extension of your hands. Music drives the emotion. We knew that it was going to be really important. We also knew that we needed a lot more music for this game than was ever in the movie. We eventually chose Bill Conti and Ashley Irwin to be our composers for this project. Bill is an Academy Award winning composer and we went with Bill and Ashley because we felt they had the technical chops to, to do a game, which is completely different than doing a movie. You cannot not identify The Godfather without that music. So you do an homage to, to Nino Rota and the music that he wrote. As a composer, I love the fact that I have to manipulate Nino's music to Godfather moments. And I'm honored to be a part of it. Interesting, in the movie, it's all transitional. So we knew right away that we had to re-record all those pieces and add a whole lot more. There's no actual music in The Godfather. There's nothing. There's nothing with any energy in The Godfather. It's all mood. So all the, the gun battles and the driving scenes and all that, it may be derivative of Godfather thematic material, but it's all going to be, have to be invented by us. These are sort of big shoes to fill. If you put that Godfather in that special place and the Nino wrote a music and you go, well, I've got to, I got to you know, step up to the plate here a little bit, you know. Music provides an emotional push, drama, helps tell you what to feel, and sound effects make it believable. Sound effects, in my opinion, bring the world to life. On a game like The Godfather, the sound effects put you in New York, 1945 to 55. We have people walking down the street. You have cars driving past you. You have trucks driving past you. So the world of, of The Godfather, sonically, is huge. You've got the detail on one side that, that creates the, the believability that lets you feel like you're really there and you're talking to a real person. We really shouldn't but we will. And then it scales all the way across to what's exciting, what's, what's scary, what's just overwhelming. It's, it's quite a challenge to, to, to create that whole spectrum. Our game audio, for the most part, the 
the player lives and breathes with the controller in his hand. He lives in that world. We don't know what he's going to do next, of course. So our audio technology, our audio design has to support whatever choice that player makes. You want it to be consistent because you don't want to break the illusion. You want to keep the player in that illusion that they are in New York City, 1945, and they're part of the Corleone family. In the Godfather game, the living world is the environment in which the player plays the game. It's an environment where their character exists, and it's an open environment that the player can explore and discover different parts of the Godfather game and different parts of the Godfather fiction. We've created a living world of New York set in the late 40s, where we've modeled and created five different neighborhoods. We've created New Jersey, Midtown, Little Italy, Brooklyn, and Hell's Kitchen. What we really wanted the player to feel like was that they were living in the movie. We wanted players to feel like they were walking around New York as it was set in the Godfather film. You have to take a certain scene that's very, very well represented in a film and, and from that scene build a large interactive world. So we did a lot of research as to what buildings would have looked like. We have piles of books and films and uh, photographs, all visual research of New York in the 40s. We actually had an architect on the team for several months who did a lot of plans for us. So all of the facades that you see in the game, the buildings, they should be accurate to what um, architecture was like in New York at that time. We got immersed in it. We were very, very interested in making sure that we represented this as accurately as we could. The first thing you do when you build a living world game is you create a map of the world. And we went block by block, setting up different buildings and setting up different buildings from scenes in the movie and setting those into the game where the player can walk by and experience them and see them as they would see it in the movie or in late 40s New York. Our goal for creating the living world for The Godfather was to give the player a lot of freedom and choices of gameplay they can experience. You can go from the streets right into a building without ever having to experience a load sequence. You can even grab somebody in an interior and throw them through a window out into the streets. And of course, beat them up when you get them out there. We want people to have a sense of feeling that this is a really rich environment that's alive. To see how accurate we are with the buildings, with the architecture, with the streets, uh, the cars, the clothing, the landmarks of New York. I really hope that when they see this New York that uh, they will feel that it's a world that, first of all, they can be immersed in, and it is really New York in the 40s. When we came to examine the movie and get inspired by the movie and get inspired by the book, um, uh, we realized that because we were creating a Godfather world, we needed to tell more than just that story. But to use that story, that a fa famous and fantastic story, as a backdrop uh, and as a sort of spine to where we we're going meant that we could develop our story around that. You've really got to respect the movie has certain elements, has a certain atmosphere, has a certain feeling. Uh, the characters are written in a certain way. Uh, and trying to keep juggling all those and make it a very playable, interactive experience, it's a huge challenge. People say it's not rocket science, but it really it is. <laughs> From a visual standpoint, the biggest challenge is probably um, uh, trying to create a world that is reminiscent of the Godfather milieu. So it was very important to get the lighting right, to get the characters looking right, to get the textures looking right. What the hell? The 
Dawn is Dead was an effort to show how it was possible to combine cinematic technique with actual interactive gameplay. We started out by storyboarding it uh, extensively, going through many revisions, then doing what's called an animatic or a boardomatic based on those storyboards where they were taken into uh, uh, the computer and animated in a very rough fashion and put a soundtrack to it and music and sort of saw how it, how it was all going to play out and gave us our first taste of what the game might feel like. Pre-visualization like the Don is Dead is really essential to communicating to the team uh, the essence of what the goals are. As long as the tone is set and the tone is correct, then I think that the lovers of the fiction, the lovers of the movie, sit down and play this game and interact with it and really feel immersed, really feel that they've become part of the story that they know and love so well. We really like to get the film actors involved in a game like Godfather because it's it's a really iconic movie. You really just get that from the film actors and they own those roles. They know exactly what those roles are, how those characters behave, and they're able to give a flavor of that actual character. You know, for old time's sake. We're reliving what we did in 1971. It's always been with me. It was an easy job for me. Didn't have to memorize because already was in here. Forget about it. So I've been recreating scenes and adding new scenes as my, as my character. And going back in time and drawing from my memory of what, what we did many years ago. Sonny, we ought to hear what they have to say. Sonny, we ought to hear what they have to say. Come on. One of the really uh, iconic scenes in the movie is the scene where Sonny and Tom are arguing and it's a really highly charged emotional piece and I think that it would really resonate with the audience. So it's important for us to get that right in the game. Business, not personal. Even the shooting of your father was business, not personal, Sonny. Well, then business will have to suffer, all right? It's, it's a really good example of where all the things that we do to bring real life into the game really work together. So first of all, we worked with um, Robert Duvall and James Kahn, and we got their performance. We feel like, um, particularly for that scene, that was what needed to drive it, was the acting ability of those two guys. You give them one message. I want Salazzo, if not, it's all at war. We go to the mattresses, all right? Father wouldn't want to hear this. This is business, not personal, son. They shot my father. That's business? Your ass. Even the shooting of your father was business, not personal, sonny. We did both a voiceover session and what we call a face-over session. Face-over is facial motion capture. We have 10 different cameras at different angles. And it's something that was pioneered um, predominantly in the film industry. Oh, God damn it. We need some help here. From there, we have a really strong base in which to build our, the, the highly intense emotional moments. Listen, Tom. And then we take that to our motion capture stage. No we play way. back that audio, and then we have the actors Stop on stage the okay? match their performance to the vocal performance that we got earlier. Listen, Tom, do me a favor. There's no more advice on how to patch things up. A lawyer with his briefcase can steal more than 100 men with guns. Hey, kid, listen. Believe me, if you ever have a hundred guys with guns on your side, whatever you do, don't trade them in for some fucking lawyer. <laughs> One of the really other cool things about using the actors is that um, whilst we take a lot of time and effort to write the scripts here, when we take that script in and we w walk through it with James Kahn, he'll tell us, you know, Sonny really wouldn't say that. You know, he would say this. Shoot the place up, bada bing, bada boom. By the way, I didn't say bada boom, bada bing is enough. We're gonna drive by, gonna shoot the place up, bada bing. Then we're gonna have the nice little weenie roast, you know what I'm saying? Bonfire. I don't know, a weenie roast. We're gonna drive by and we're gonna shoot the place up real good, bada bing. Then we're gonna have ourselves a nice little bonfire, a pig roast. Nobody can be sunny like James Kahn can. There really is just an incredible richness of audio quality in this game that I just don't think you're gonna see in any other games.